hi there today we're going to be unboxing a samsung 50 inch tv so details in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing this was purchased on a black friday offer on john lewis's website for 499 pounds it's going to be used in my gaming setup so if you see there my current tv isn't 4k so it'll be replacing that that one there is actually 43 inches so it's slightly bigger than that so let's have a quick look around the packaging. It comes in a large box, some details here. Dynamic crystal color, UHD processor, HDR, smart things, 4K, works with Apple AirPlay, works with Alexa, works with Google Assistant, HDMI, and there you go, certified UHD. So 4K Ultra HD connected. Coming around the side, got a handle for carrying the same as on the other side and that's it so let's open it up and see what we get in the packaging so i've removed the first part of the packaging the tv is still in the box but all the other items have been removed so let me quickly go through the items you get so right over here at the back that's the bottom part of the stand and if i grab it just to give you an idea quite heavy in weight obviously it has to be quite solid to hold the tv in place all plasticky around here a gray finish here looks like a, a satin finish on there and a glossy finish around there coming around the other way this is where all the weight is so metal plate here must be some metal underneath there and we've got some fixtures for attaching the tv so looking over here there's the next part of the mount plate so this attaches onto the back of the tv and there's some screws on the back of this so finish wise all plasticky slight glossy finish on there a matte finish on here and obviously you've got the holes for mounting coming around there same again all plasticky seems a reasonably good quality nice and firm okay next you've got a quick start guide if i turn it over quick setup guide and looking here just shows you how to safely take the TV out of the box obviously it's saying it recommends using two people lay it on a flat surface and then attach the actual stand onto there so you can then sit it up and then as well as that you get this bag so this one contains the additional items so there's something you can rip open here so let me do that okay so I've laid out everything you get in that bag and just to show what you have so register now activate your one year warranty safety precaution document there and some details here it looks like it's multi-language okay next piece of paper showing you the connections on the back of the tv and a user manual if i flick through that briefly okay it looks like it's all in english next you've got a power cable thin cable on here so the cable's 1.4 meters in length. I'll take the cover off here. It's got a fuse as well, so UK standard. Next, you've got two sets of batteries, AAA and AA, so it's good they give some batteries with this. And obviously the two remotes. So this is the smart remote with voice control, it seems, on there. And that's a standard remote on there. Both feel very light, obviously no batteries in there at the moment. And build wise, no different from any other remote really, just feels standard. So here we have common interface, five volts only, and it looks like it attaches on the back of the TV. Next we have some additional fixtures, and that's it. So next thing, we need to remove the TV and install the base for it. So let's assemble the stand. For looking at the instructions, I don't think it really shows properly how to assemble this. So worth me showing it. On the back of this, there is a plastic bit. And if I gently lift that up, it pops off. Now what you're supposed to do 
you place it into position like so and if I spin this around there's actually four holes these sides so what you're supposed to do is obviously screw the screws in that came with the base so I'll do that next so this is now securely screwed on and we can just take this back plate and re return it back to its position and there you go so that's how it is so we've got some screws on the other side of this and if we now take these off we can use that to attach the TV onto the TVs now removed from the box placed it on the table and just to show you the connections on the back so coming in close here got an Ethernet port looks like composite connections here coming around here you've got a connection point for a standard aerial satellite connection so FreeSat for example and HDMI inputs there USB input there another USB there and optical connection as well just below that and that's it nothing more finish on the back you can just see for yourself obviously all plasticky and designs here strips with gaps in them just to show here you've got the mounting wall mounting bracket positions here seams and obviously the stand goes there power is just here and looking underneath you can see some vents looks like that's probably where the speakers would be giving out sound and let's give an angled view so you can see how thick it is okay so next let's install the table mount so it goes in this sort of angle and you can just put it into place like so and you've got the four holes so let me put the screws in now and these screws obviously were on the back of that plate so that's it it's all firmly secure and we can now move the TV and put it onto our cabinet the TV is now being positioned onto the cabinet as you can see just to show the space I've got at the top small bit of space here and if I show the bottom of it you can see that much in terms of movement if I try wobbling a little bit it does move a little bit not surprising obviously the size of it so 50 inch um, size wise much bigger than the existing one I had on there now if we come in close just to show there is bits of plastic on there which need removing so along the sides here all the way around the rim coming around here if I just pull that up and there you go so let me plug in the cables we'll power it on and see what the initial setups like and there you go this is what it looks like so obviously all the cables going into this gap channel down here and nicely tidy there into the single location so excellent design feature here I've plugged in the TV now and I'll put the batteries in the remote control powers on let's turn on the TV Okay, so that's what we're initially presented with and download smart things app on your phone to start TV setup press right to set up your TV with remote let's go with the remote for now select your country let me enter in a pin okay, pin change successfully TV setup made easy we will help you set up your TV and devices so you can control your devices easily terrestrial cable is connected HDMI is connected I can hear my PlayStation powering on like it can connect to that as well terrestrial cable signal detected select each item and choose the correct settings then next to search for channels that's fine and next to that okay wired connection successful smart hub terms and conditions privacy policy let's agree to all and click OK sign in with your Samsung account no need for this enter your postcode identify devices your TV is now identifying connected devices terrestrial cable it's searching in the background and HDMI 1 is picked up it's PlayStation 4 so let's give it a moment to complete next we're on region selection so let's select the primary region England secondary region London close to that 
identification complete, identification is complete, you can now use your Samsung Smart Remote to control your TV and any devices below that are marked with the Samsung Smart Remote icon. And let's click next to that. TV setup summary, your TV has been set up as shown below. Okay, that seems fine. Obviously terrestrial TV, HDMI for PlayStation, and we've got network connectivity via ethernet cable. Make your smart hub, create your own smart hub below. We can add in more items. So let's add in BBC News, BBC Sport. Let's have whatever is there. Nothing else there. Click done. Are you ready to enjoy your smart hub? Click yes to that. Test your remote, try using your remote and see if it works. Okay, that's working. Channel up and down. Yep, that seems to be working. Speaker's working too. Excellent. Let's click next. Let's watch TV. Your smart TV is now ready to use. Start watching. And there you go, simple as that, to get up and running. So in the corner, it's just appeared with a message saying ambient light detection is on. Your screen brightness will adjust automatically as the brightness in the room changes. Okay, that's quite cool. Now on the remote control, let me click guide. And on the guide, you can see all the channels available. Now if I page up, so just looking for the HD channels and I can see them there. If I select one of them, so BBC News, The quality is not too bad, a bit sluggish, I have to admit, with the remote as I'm flipping to guide. So as I'm going down, just to show, I'm pressing, it's not bad. Let's now turn off guide. I'll click it. There you go. Takes a second or two just to appear. Next, if I come out of guide, and you can see new releases to rent action, 99 pence rentals, comedy. Okay, so let's see if we can stream something. So iPlayers here, if I select that, let's see how that performs. So I've entered in my details and now this is what you're presented with. So I've entered details into a web browser. So we finally have access to iPlayer. If I click continue, Okay, got it for that one. And there you go, up and running. Let's pick a random program. And there you go, no issues there, works well. And performance seems to be good. And let's see what else is there. YouTube's there, that's good. Let's try that. So this is what we're presented with in the YouTube app. Welcome, sign in, it's free. Sign in with your phone, sign in with a web browser, use YouTube signed out. So we'll go for the signed out option. Okay, and if I now, so now if we go here, voice search, Geek Street, and there you go, channels appeared straight away. So let's go into the channel. Performance wise seems good. So I'm pressing the button and it's very nice and responsive. Let's pick a video. Let's go for the Xbox unboxing. Hi there, today we're unboxing an Xbox One X. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. There you go, simple as that. And you can use voice control from the secondary remote. Picture clarity is very good on this. And now let's come out of there. So streaming YouTube seems very good. Why now? So next, let me show the settings options you have available. So clicking on settings, we've got picture initially, with picture mode, neutral, movie, dynamic. So let's keep it on standard for now. Picture size, 69, that's fine. Expert settings, let's see what's shown in there. Okay, back, we've got sound, sound output, TV speaker, sound mode, standard, optimized, by settings, digital output, audio format, so Dolby Digital, 
output audio delay, Atmos compatibility, function is available, auto volume, sound feedback and reset sound. Next one is broadcasting, tuning settings. Okay, so you can retune it using this. And I'll come down just to show what else you have available on there. Then we have general. So that's the Bigsby voice settings. So that's the equivalent of the Google and the Alexa for Samsung. Then we have network, show you the network settings, system manager, show these. External device manager, click on that. Apple AirPlay settings, eco solution, come on there. So ambient light detection, and this is where you can turn that off if you didn't want it. There you go. Accessibility, let's go through these options very quickly. Go back, smart features, auto run smart hub, auto run last app, reset as well. So that will reset all settings to factory default. Then you have support, software update, going into there. Let's see if there's an update available. No update required, let's go back. Self-diagnosis, open e-manual, request support, remote management, that's an interesting one. So it says, allow the Samsung call center to remotely access and troubleshoot your TV when you need assistance. This service requires an internet connection is available once you agree to the service agreement about your TV. So coming down terms and policy, it's a privacy policy. And that's it, that's all the options you have in setup available. Next, let's do a sound level test. So I've got my sound level meter here. Let's check for ambient noise levels first. So 35 decibels. Now I'm gonna play a video with music in and let me turn the volume up to maximum. So I'm seeing around 77 decibels. So in terms of sound quality, it's not too bad. It's not extremely bassy, but that's not a surprise, especially as it is a thin panel TV. Now, if you can plug it into an amplifier or sound bar to get better sound quality, but if you want reasonable levels, this is fine and sufficient. Next, we're gonna test some gaming on this TV. So I've got my Xbox One X plugged in, and just to show the resolution is now selected at 4K Ultra HD. If I click on there, you can see the other resolutions available. If I move along, 4K TV details and click on that. Some info there, it's a TV resolution. Your TV supports 4K Ultra HD 60 Hertz. Okay, so if we go back and go to video modes, so, I turn this on, allow auto low latency mode, and if you look on the other side, it says this lets games switch your TV into auto low latency, also called game mode. You can see allow 4K is selected and allow HDR10. Those two were selected by default when I went to 4K. Okay, now if we come out, and there you go. Let's go on to land. So we've got Fortnite running here. And picture quality seems very good on this. So just to note, probably wouldn't be as good as what you'd get on a gaming monitor at a higher refresh rate, but for a general TV, it's pretty good. The color levels seem very good on there, brightness levels and all. Obviously you can adjust it 
if you wanted, but by default, this is what you get. Let's try to get a lot of movement on there, just to give you a good idea what to expect. There you go. It's a very impressive, so gaming wise, it does seem to work very well. Next, I've plugged in a USB key, and if I now look on sources, I can see flash disk. If I click on that, you can actually see the files on there now. So if I click there, one of my videos is on there. And there you go, a 4K video that I recorded and running straight off that USB key. And it was recorded 4K 60 frames per second. So excellent performance there. Doesn't struggle in any way playing this and no codec related issues on there. So really impressed. Next, let's test out remote access. So this is quite an interesting feature. If I go into it and you have three options available. So if we read what's on the screen, it's saying connect a keyboard and mouse to this TV before starting. So you've got remote PC. So this is like an RDP connection where you connect directly onto a PC. And then you've got screen sharing and it says wireless here. And then you've got Office 365. So what I'm gonna show is a screen sharing option. So quite interesting what we have here. So if I click on there, so it shows the steps to follow to wireless you share the screen of your PC onto the TV. If now I'm go to my PC and I just follow the instructions they're given on the screen, so I'll click connect and I've got the TV appear and let's give it a second. There you go. And now it's attempting to make a connection. And there you go. Connected to my PC now. So I can see an extended display. So it's just mirroring exactly what I'm seeing on there. So if I now just show what's in settings, for instance, gaming, working, watching videos. Let's see if you can use it as a secondary screen. So if I go to display settings, okay, so it's showing it's duplicating the displays. And if I now scroll down, so duplicate these displays and extend these displays. So now what's happened, it's showing it as a separate screen. So excellent function. The fact you can wirelessly connect to your TV and then still use it as a working display. So at the moment, I've got a window open and if I drag it across, there you go. So this is the window on my laptop screen. So excellent functionality here. No cables required in any way. Next, I'm gonna show internet connectivity on the TV. So I've paired up my Logitech G915 keyboard and on the actual interface, we're gonna scroll across and look for the app internet. Once you select it, this is what you're presented with. So you can use your remote, your smart remote to navigate around. And if I select the URL and I can go into there and now you can speak obviously via the voice control here. So I can hold on to it and say YouTube Geek Street. YouTube Geek Street. There you go. So you can do it that way. Also, you can use the keyboard. So if I now select everything, delete, say YouTube Geek Street. And there you go. So works really well. Performance is good as well. Obviously, I've connected the keyboard via Bluetooth, hence why it's connected. So you'd want something that connects remotely like that. But works well and performance seems to be good as well from what I've seen already. So if I go there, give it a moment. And there you go, it's appeared and the video is playing like a normal web page. Navigating isn't too bad. Obviously, it's not like a normal desktop experience, but still does the job. 
Next, let me demonstrate the voice control on this. So I've got the smart remote here and there's a microphone icon on one of the buttons. So if I hold on to that and say one, one o one, BBC one, BBC one London. ITV ITV2 So it does work to some extent it is a bit flaky I have to admit it's not that reliable Let's try again so channel 4 There you go that's worked BBC4 So yeah, it can work in some instances, sometimes it does struggle, but does the job fairly well, I'd say. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this Samsung Smart TV. Very impressed by it, really am. Blown away by the functionality you have in there. The fact you've got obviously the 4K picture quality, which is really good, works well with the gaming, simple to set up. You've got both normal terrestrial TV and satellite TV capabilities built into it. It's smart enough to turn on your other devices connected to it. You can screen mirror directly off a PC. You can RDP connect to a PC as well. You can connect up Bluetooth devices like keyboards or mice onto it. You can, you can browse the internet on there. You can stream services off there like YouTube, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Apps seem okay. They have read reports regarding Samsung TVs and their privacy. You can disable this as well. So there you go. Hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.